if any of you have any questions or comments, I will welcome them. So, let me now tell you the institutions that I am going to connect. Uh, we are going over to Chitkara University, Chandigarh, Punjab. Hello. In my opinion, productive thinking alone cannot lead to research till it is put into practice. That practice may include lots of reading, writing, speaking, attending conferences, experimenting, analytical evaluation, etc., etc. Over to you. As I mentioned, uh, that there are different aspects. You are right that thinking alone is not sufficient. But the point uh, uh, I want to make is that thinking pervades everything, even thinking pervades action. Right? How you will act depends on how you think. So, uh, I agree with you that uh, productive thinking alone will not ensure research output, but it is an important prerequisite. Without productive thinking ability, there will be no research output. Okay? So, uh, it is correct that you have to do other things like communicating and so on. That is why we are discussing various topics, right? communication skills, thinking skills, uh, experimental skills, uh, management skills, right? stress and time management and so on. So, that is correct. What you say is correct, but you must understand the importance of productive thinking. That is the first important thing, right? Because how you do an experiment will depend on your productive thinking. Even design of experiment will depend on productive thinking. So, thinking pervades everything. Uh, so, concerning the importance of thinking, we are starting with this topic in the beginning, right? And we are going to discuss other things as well. Yes, next. Uh, you have one more uh, question or comment? Excuse me, sir. As we were discussing about the hypothesis that where you prove different questions, I do have one question regarding the same. Uh, in most of the research papers, what we do have is uh, uh, null hypothesis or when we prove the things by contradiction. I just wish to know whether it is sufficient as well as the necessary condition. Can it form a necessary and sufficient condition to prove an effect? or we need to give two or three different proofs for the same. Actually, I was going through one paper in which a person has proved, I think, six to seven theorems uh, with most of the theorems proved by using this contradiction theory. Uh, what you are uh, saying is that, is it necessary to give uh, two or three different proofs uh, or different ways of supporting your hypothesis or is just one method of supporting sufficient. Yes, if you have one method of supporting your hypothesis, even that can be sufficient though. If you give more than one, that is welcome. Okay? So, uh, when I said that you must uh, discuss different uh, proofs of Pythagoras theorem, that is see if you have conceived the Pythagoras theorem for the first time, even one proof is significant and sufficient. So, I am uh, saying in the context of developing your creative thinking. right? So, if you want to develop creative thinking, then you must uh, read this kind of material where different ways of doing the same thing has been presented. That, that was the point I was trying to make. Not that in your research for your hypothesis, you should give uh, two or three different proofs. If you can, that is good. But even uh, one good proof, if other people have not given, is good enough for research. Uh, did I answer your question or did I understand your question correctly? I wish to know that proving a theorem by contradiction, is that sufficient to prove any theorem? Like we go, whenever we prove any theorem, we go for yeah, two yes. different conditions. Yes. One is necessary, second one is the sufficient conditions. Right? If we prove a particular theorem by contradiction, like if we have two yeah. sets, yes. this yes, number yes, does not yes, belong yes. to A, does not to B, that means this is not, not a part of any of these yeah, things, something like that. Yes. That uh, whether Proving the things by contradiction is sufficient or not? Yes. In fact, uh, you will find many of the theorems are proved by contradiction. right? So, it is uh, nothing but, uh, uh, it is a form of logical statement. right? So, so instead of saying A implies B, if you, uh, instead of proving A implies B, if you prove B bar, implies a bar right those you know that these two are logically equivalent 
So, you, you can prove an hypothesis in either forms, right. So, proof by contradiction, uh, I would think I am not uh, so much well versed in mathematics as a mathematician is, though I do use mathematics, but logically uh, speaking, uh, yes, so proof by contradiction uh, should be uh, good enough. What type of research is more preferable, whether it is experimental based or case studies based? Because uh, whenever uh, discussion is going on, then the seniors say they, if the research is experimental based, then you, uh, there is an ease to publish the papers. What, what are your views, sir? Over See, uh, this um, sort of thing is, uh, uh, this is an issue, experimental versus uh, theory. So, the question is, is experimental research more preferable than theoretical research? Because according to the person who asked the question, his uh, seniors say that if you do experimental work, it is easy to publish papers, right. I mean, I am framing the questions as you have uh, said it. Now, it depends on uh, <coughs> what criterion you use. If ease of publication is something you are looking for, right, based on that you can arrive at a particular conclusion about between theory and experiment. However, please note that uh, there are uh, differing perceptions about this issue. For instance, a person doing theoretical work uh, looks at a person doing experimental work and sees that and feels that you know that a person doing experimental work is able to publish very easily. On the other hand, sometimes a person doing experimental work sees that a theoretician is able to publish papers easily because he says you do not have to you know rig up an apparatus to generate data and so on. So, uh, I think this question is uh, to be uh, looked at in more detail because when you say you are doing experimental work, are you talking about uh, setting up an experiment? Then we have to see how difficult it is to set up your experiment, how difficult it is to ensure accuracy and precision in your measurements okay, and so on. In fact, if you are uh, very particular about doing good experimental work, it can be as difficult as theoretical work or it can be more difficult also, right. So, because you are spending a lot of time in doing uh, setting up your apparatus, uh, fabricating your device and so on, you may not get any output for few years, okay. But it can also happen that once you have a, a ready made setup, you can churn out a large amount of data out of it and then you may be able to get a large number of papers. So, uh, I think what your senior has said uh, is not a general uh, observation that one can make, right. Uh, sometimes uh, people who are doing theoretical work can publish more easily than people doing experimental work. It depends on the specific type of work you are doing, type of experimental work you are doing, what it involves, okay. If your uh, senior has set up the uh, apparatus and you are only taking the readings, yes, your job is much easier, no doubt, okay. You can easily generate a uh, lot of data, whereas a theoretical person will have to think of an idea, a new idea and new way of solving the equation and so on, that can be, uh, that can be more difficult, okay. Uh, so, it depends, uh, I think it depends, right. You, the experimental work can also be of high quality, can be difficult to do and theoretical work can also be of high quality and you know difficult to do. But ideally people say that in engineering it is good if your research work involves both theory and experiment. If it is possible you must have a combination. Okay, Hindustan Institute of Technology and Management Agra. Sir, uh, sir simulation results are equally uh, because uh, just now we talked about experimental I was asking about simulation part sir. Simulation uh, results are equally. Uh, uh, can a PhD can be awarded based upon the simulation exp uh, results that we get instead of experimental results? Simulation uh, results using MATLAB if I prove something, uh, then uh, it is what uh, equally competent to an experimental result. Because this is a basic problem. Because uh, uh, basically in our field uh, it is very difficult to do the experimental part, and it is very very costly, and we don't have that much of funding in the private colleges. So simulation results are really uh, valued or not? This is my question. I want to ask. So, let me repeat your question. You are asking whether a PhD can be awarded for just simulation results, okay, without doing any experiments. 
Now, I think uh, in the morning another uh, participant also asked the same question, right? And I will repeat the answer that I had given that though you may not be able to do an experiment, it should be possible for you to uh, get experimental data from literature. Okay? Uh, let me complete the answer, I have not completed. Uh, you, so, you must attempt doing that. Now, on the other hand, supposing you are doing a simulation of a new device. So, let us say, uh, I am taking an example. Let us say you have uh, thought of a new uh, transistor, okay, which can be used a device, semiconductor device, which can be used for amplification, a new structure. And uh, you want to sh uh, show that it is worth going forward and actually fabricating the structure. So, for that you will have to first uh, show some performance advantages. right? Now, that you say that because uh, nowadays simulation tools are readily available, I will uh, put that structure in a simulator right? and then I will develop, I will generate the characteristics and then based on the characteristics, I will argue and show that this transistor has uh, better performance than an existing transistor. Now, in this case, it will be difficult to do an experiment because you do not have the facility to build such a device. Okay? In such a case, if your uh, new device is showing uh, significant improvement over the old other device, right? it may be acceptable as research work for the award of a degree. So, here what will be important is how significant is your simulation result, okay? point number one. Point number two, you will have to also uh, uh, establish in detail in your thesis why the models that you have used for simulation are realistic. Okay? Because I can always use a model and try to cook up some result and show that uh, my device has better performance. So, for that, what you will have to do is, you will have to show that uh, you have used models which if applied to existing devices will predict the experimental results correctly. So, in other words, you will have to do what is called benchmarking your simulator properly. So, the reviewer will definitely try to see whether you have done that exercise uh, properly right? to uh, you know ensure confidence in your simulation result. So, uh, to summarize my answer to your question, one first point is yes, uh, if your idea is very significantly new and you show its uh, viability using simulation, it can be acceptable for a PhD degree, but the important uh, condition is that the models that you have used in simulation should be well established and you must have, uh, you must show that the models you use are realistic. Therefore, some form of uh, comparison with experiment will come at that point. So, you may not be able to compare uh, the results of your new device because you cannot, no one has made, made such a device, but you can always give a comparison with experiment for the models that you have chosen, which might be applicable for other devices also. right? So, uh, this is what you will have to do. SDM Dharwad, please go ahead. Sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I would like to ask the question on the difference between application research and the theoretical research. One requires the more of creativity, other requires more of intelligence. Is that true? Okay. Let me re, uh, repeat your question. Your uh, quest uh, question is that it is believed that Theoretical research requires more creativity, while application oriented research requires more intelligence. Is it true? That is your question. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah, the other way, the application research may require more of intelligence, sir, yeah. more of creativity. No, Theoretical so research may require more of intelligence. No, uh, please, uh, let me repeat what you said. Uh, are you saying that theoretical research requires more of intelligence and application research requires more of creativity? Is that what you are saying? No. In fact, any research requires creativity. Let me illustrate this point. Okay? Suppose uh, take a person, a scientist like uh, Newton who has discovered law of gravitation, let us say. Okay? This is theoretical work. Now, let us take a person like Edison, who came up with the incandescent lamp. Edison is not a theoretical person. Now, uh, coming up with the law of gravitation is also a creative exercise. Coming up with uh, 
an incandescent lamp, an invention, it is a practical application oriented work, it also requires creativity. So, as we have said, creativity involves asking new questions. So, in fact, uh, uh, in the course of our lecture session tomorrow, we are going to uh, discuss creativity in more detail, uh, so that you will, I think you will get a good answer to this question in the discussion that will happen tomorrow, because we are going to define what is meant by creativity and we will give examples to illustrate. So, any new useful combination right, is, uh, is creativity. It can be in the, uh, so, for an, uh, so for example, a scientist who does theoretical work and an inventor who comes up with a practical device, right? Both are being creative in their own way. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, over. Uh, yes, Rajaram Bapu Institute of Technology, Islampur. Uh, as far as research in engineering is concerned, uh, much of engineering problems involve mathematics uh, obviously. Uh, the major difficulty comes when uh, a researcher has to mathematically model his problem. Uh, to be specific, a lot of learning is needed to understand the potential of mathematical tools like differential equations, optimization and so on. Is there any practice in our premier technological institutes which develops this understanding and seeking help of mathematics in an efficient way? That is my question, sir. So, let me uh, rephrase uh, what you have said. Uh, you have said that um, working on a number of topics in engineering requires mathematical tools and use of mathematical ideas. So, uh, are there any mechanisms of uh, developing the uh, this mathematical ability or uh, ma making uh, researchers conversant with the required tools and concepts, so that he is able to, he or she is able to uh, model an engineering problem. Yes, uh, some uh, see <coughs> some efforts uh, are made in every institution in this direction. Well, let me give an example. Uh, in IIT Madras, people have come up with a course such as Mathematics for Engineers. Okay, or there is in fact a whole uh, um, a basket of courses which are uh, taken up by uh, taken by students. It is called uh, mathematics for industrial applications. So, uh, in all these kind of exercises, the idea is to uh, discuss mathematics from a point of view of specific applications required in industry. But <coughs> there is always an issue with this sort of thing, okay? uh, that is should the uh, people who are hardcore mathematicians discuss about how their ideas are applicable for industry. So, should such courses be, be offered by a mathematics department or should such courses be offered by specific engineering disciplines, by people who are doing lot of mathematical work who are in that discipline. Okay? So, for example, mathematics for electrical engineers, a course like this should it be offered by an electrical engineering professor or should it be offered by a mathematics professor. Okay? So, that issue remains, but within this uh, limitation, yes, efforts are made frequently. Okay? But uh, definitely, um, whether there are such courses or not, there are definitely are books. So, one can take the help of books. Books are available. I have myself seen and uh, used such books. Right? You have a book titled Mathematics for Engineers. Okay? So, this kind of books will uh, uh, give you that background required. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So, uh, Devi Ahilya University Institute of Engineering and Technology, Indore. Sir, he has left. I have one question to ask. We have different approaches, like uh, we have simulation, analytical modeling, and then experimental. So, uh, 
how uh, how should we decide about that we should select because uh, all approaches may not be possible so what should be the basis of uh, selecting that we should follow simulation and analytical modeling or combination of any such uh, uh, approaches for starting our uh, work and what should be the basis uh, so let me repeat the question you are saying whether uh, you should take a simulation approach or analytical approach or experimental approach uh, in your research so i i think uh, research problems uh, you should first look at it from research problem so what is the research problem you are trying to tackle because analytical uh, simulation or experiment is a means of uh, you know doing your research so uh, <clears throat> normally people focus on research problem okay and then discuss about ways of doing the research problem depending on the limitations of your place okay so uh, i think that is the order in which you should proceed uh, so first you should uh, think of a number of research problems that you would like to work on alternatives and then you should assess uh, what are the strengths and limitations of your place as i have said uh, ideally it is good if a research has both experimental and theoretical components there is no doubt about it a combination of these two right now every research should have an analytical component i think there is there can be no two opinions about it a research can be experimental or theoretical right but uh, both cases it has to be some ana component analytical component has to be there analysis interpretation this has to be a part of uh, any research so i think we should not put uh, analytical versus experimental or analysis versus experiment right because analysis should be there okay you can talk about theoretical or experimental but interpretation analysis has to be there in experimental work or theoretical work now if you are if you are meaning by the word analytical uh, some sort of analytical solutions of equations if that is what you mean right it is important to know what you mean by analysis or analytical work if by uh, you are using the word analytical in a uh, mathematical sense okay then it involves uh, deriving closed form solutions or analytical solutions to equations okay now that depends on what is your interest in mathematics and what ability in mathematics you have okay so uh, i am not meaning analysis in that sense i mean analysis is in a more general sense every uh, research problem should involve analysis okay analytical thinking so i am using the word analytical uh, as a basic thinking ability uh, basic thinking process okay so every research work should have analysis whether it you choose an experimental approach or theoretical approach it depends if if in your place does not have um, the facilities for developing an expensive experimental setup then uh, maybe you should not choose a problem which will require extensive experiments but i am repeating what i have said earlier in response to two other questions that you can always get experimental data from literature and you must find some way of utilizing that okay if you include that kind of component where the, you have some theoretical work which can be compared with data experimental data in literature okay then it will definitely add strength to your research work you must always aim for it i have also given an example where a person may do a simulation of a new device and he or she may not fabricate the device but present only the simulation of characteristics of that device and show that it they are challenging but then experimental work or comparison with the experiment can come in at the level of models the models that the person uses to simulate the new device can be tested against existing experiments because many of the models will uh, be uh, for phenomena which have been tested but the phenomena may get combined in a different way in a new device but the phenomena themselves may not be new they may be existing phenomena so there you can always give a comparison that the models you have chosen match very well with experiment for existing devices and therefore you are using those models and then you are proving the uh, capability of the new device so this is how uh, I, one can think of bringing in experimental work even if you don't have experimental facility in your place use experimental work available in literature data 
available in literature. So, uh, uh, I, I will probably repeat by saying that uh, building an experimental, uh, building a setup or a device alone is not experiment. Okay? Experiment can also mean comparison with experimental data available in literature. If you cannot build the setup, but if you can build a setup, nothing like it. So, uh, KMEA Engineering College, Aluwa. Sir, I am doing uh, research in the field of uh, multi core systems. Uh, my guide said we have to take the data from the benchmark, standard benchmarks. We should, we should not take the data as an assumption. But uh, taking data from the benchmarks is very expensive for my research area. So, what is the solution for that? Is it essential to take uh, data only from the benchmarks? How, how is uh, taking uh, data from benchmark expensive? Can you please uh, elaborate on that? Sir, for my area, uh, when I was search, searching for uh, benchmarking data, uh, it is available only from abroad, uh, one of the institutions. But uh, for getting the data and in licensed version, we have to pay uh, some thousands of dollars. It is very expensive for me to spare such an amount. So, what is the alternative solution for that one, sir? Uh, 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 frankly, I am not able to give you an alternative solution because unless I know more about your problem, okay, uh, I do not think I can give you any satisfactory answer. So, uh, I will again uh, say the uh, something that I said to an earlier participant, you please uh, describe your uh, you know difficulty in little bit more detail on the Moodle discuss uh, this thing, right. You can just after this uh, uh, session is over today. You can describe in little more detail, so I, I can read it and then uh, you know I can probably give a uh, um, more reasonable answer tomorrow. Unless you are able to describe the problem to me in little bit more detail, I, I am not able to give any answer. Another one thing is uh, research is uh, productive thinking, you have said no sir, but uh, it should involve reproductive thinking also, right? Since we have to take the concepts from the previous papers all together has to constitute the research work. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, reproductive so I, I thinking see, also holds yeah. there, no? And now, this is where uh, we must frame our sentences uh, properly. I, I said, research involves productive thinking. I did not say or we should not say research involves only productive thinking, right? No. As I said, uh, for our day to day life, reproductive thinking is always required. One cannot avoid it, but it is not sufficient. That is the point. For research, you have to be a productive thinker. That is the point that we uh, try to make. Okay? So, you are right. You, uh, you cannot do without reproductive thinking. Thank you, sir. Uh, Akhnada Institute, anyone there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Surya Kiran. I am assistant professor in Geetam University. My question is how to decide as a supervisor. Uh, that the actual research has started and how to also decide as well that the research is going to complete at this particular end because both are uh, very much infinite in nature. The start of the research is an infinite decision and the end of the research is also an infinite decision because there is no end. There is no beginning and there is no end uh, to the research because everything is research in this world. So, uh, let me answer uh, the way you have framed the question. Uh, let me first uh, I repeat the question for the benefit of other centers. Uh, you are saying that how do you decide um, when the research has started and how do you decide when it has ended? Okay. I think, um, uh, uh, please uh, tell me whether I have understood your question correctly. Yeah, that is correct. Sir. That is my question. Now, the way you have framed, say research starts when you, when a student joins for PhD. I think that question can be easily answered in practical terms, right. So, uh, for the student. So, for a, any person, uh, when it starts, I think we can very easily identify. For a student, let us say, for a PhD scholar, the research starts as far as he is concerned, when he has uh, joined the program. Now, uh, uh, so next question is, uh, you know, when does the uh, scholar stop doing research? As you said, it is an endless process and one can go on and on. Okay? Now, uh, that is why different uh, institutes have given uh, some practical guidelines on what is the requirement for a PhD thesis? As I said, I give an example. 
in IIT Madras, we say that uh, a PhD thesis, there should be at least two good journal publications. If your research work is such that it can be put in the form of two good journal publications, then that is sufficient for a PhD degree. Now, here uh, there is one more issue. What is a good journal? How do you decide that journal is good? Okay. Now, this question I will uh, answer in a uh, separate session. Uh, you see that uh, in your schedule, there is a session devoted to where and uh, where should I publish my research work. Okay. So, when I am discussing that topic, I will answer this question. So, what is meant by a good journal? Okay. How do you decide a journal is good? But you know, that is the, so when uh, you are published in a good journal, then you can uh, you know stop uh, maybe couple of papers. right? So, uh, people other people may have other variants of this criterion for deciding when a PhD process can end, but uh, research as such will never end as you have said rightly. So, we are talking about when does a PhD end. Okay, that is a more practical question. Have I answered your uh, question? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I've got one more question. If we get a patent out of uh, that particular PhD work, is that considered as a completion of a PhD? Uh, yes, that's a uh, good question. Uh, uh, patents can also be regarded as uh, some sort of equivalent for publications. Yes, uh, <coughs> there are some um, some issues though, right? Because uh, the goal of patenting and uh, publishing, there are some differences. Why people patent and why people publish? Okay, so uh, these uh, mo different motivations of the two activities should be taken into account. Again, I will uh, discuss this point because there is a session devoted to publishing and patenting. I think uh, this issue also I will discuss uh, then, so that I don't end up repeating because there are many people who are not here centers have closed for the day. I will discuss the uh, answer to this question in that session, when I am going to discuss how to publish and patent and where to publish and patent. DKTS Ichal Karanji, go ahead. Uh, there is one question related with the, uh, the duration of the uh, research just now mentioned. Similar type of question I want to ask, one is in due course of time, there will be some changes to be made in an experimental plan, but uh, in university procedures, it is very difficult to change the experimental plan. So, in such case, how one should go about that? Over to you. Yeah, I uh, will. Um, uh, so, let me re, uh, re, um, repeat what you said that uh, in the course of research, one may need to change the plan of uh, experiments. But in university procedures, uh, do not uh, university procedures do not allow a change in experimental plan. So, what should one do? Uh, now, I have to understand uh, what do you mean by saying university procedures do not allow a change in experimental plan. I do not understand that statement. So, I will need some clarification from you. What do you mean by that? At the start of the uh, the session, or when once the candidate submits the synopsis of his research and that synopsis is taken as a guideline for the completion. So, at the end of the research work may be M Tech, ME or even PhD cases also. At the end when he submits his thesis that will be judged on the basis of synopsis we have submitted earlier and in that we have given some experimental plan okay. over to you. So, let me repeat what you said. You said that the thesis has to confirm to the plan submitted in the synopsis and synopsis is submitted much earlier and the thesis is submitted much later. But from the time when the synopsis is submitted to the time when thesis is submitted in between you realize that uh, your uh, uh, plan was not correct and uh, it needs a change. Uh, now, I have to understand this uh, properly because in IIT for example, in IITs I can say not only IIT. Uh, or in general, a synopsis is submitted, all, synopsis also is submitted by the end of research. Synopsis is given to various reviewers, so that they can read the uh, gist of your uh, thesis in brief and decide whether they can review the work. That is the purpose of synopsis. 
So, I, prob I think you, what you are implying is uh, in the beginning of your research, you are asked to give some sort of a plan of what you are going to do. I do not know whether that plan you are calling as synopsis. If that is so, I do not think uh, any research, uh, any place where research is being done, people will say that whatever you tell in the beginning, right, the same thing you should submit at the end, because then uh, what, where is the research? Initially, you are only submitting a plan. I do not think that plan you should call as synopsis. Or if you want to call it a synopsis, you say it is not the, it is a synopsis of, it is not synopsis of research, but it is synopsis of the initial plan. And I do not see how uh, regulations do not allow a change in plan. So, uh, please tell me, uh, give me an example. Let us say a person joins for research, in how much time he submits the synopsis and in how much time he or she submits the thesis. Then only I, I, I will understand what you mean because otherwise I do not think that is uh, reasonable. Uh, for example, the ME or MTech student, first year he used to clear the theory papers, theory courses and second year he is supposed to complete his project work that is research work. At the start of second year, maybe in first month itself, he has to submit this experiment plant with synopsis. Now, this synopsis I am talking about. So, you may be saying it as a synopsis for plan of work. But whatever things mentioned in that, they are taken as a base. And at the end of this year, when the evaluation is there for his thesis, this basis, there may be some uh, changes in due course of time he might have made. So, there will be some ambiguity whether it is correct or not, you have taken uh, in experimental plan, you have taken this like that and you have changed. Yeah, I think uh, uh, there that? should be no regulations like that, which say that, uh, you know, whatever you submit at the beginning, you must stick to that. I think uh, during research, it is well recognized that changes happen and sometimes in fact, the uh, way a thesis is submitted, I am talking about an MTech that your uh, project like thing, uh, in a one year project, actually whatever work you have done. In that form, probably you might have done the work in the last three months of your uh, project period. Okay? So, after doing uh, working for uh, eight or nine months, you would have realized, oh, this is the way I uh, should do it better. And then in the last three months, then you change your orientation and you complete the work. So, I, I do not think any regulations can be there which say that whatever is your initial plan, you must, uh, you know, uh, everything should be exactly like that. It cannot happen like that. So, I do not know why such a regulation is there. I do not think regulations are unreasonable. Maybe you have to read the regulation, uh, you know, correctly. I do not think regulation require that sort of a thing. Oh, yes. What they might be meaning is uh, a broad plan. If you say you are going to work in some specific area and now you do not th submit the thesis in completely different area. They just for, uh, you know, uh, some practical reasons, they might have said something like that. But I do not think detailed plan you must uh, stick to. The, the plan is required so that people know that you have thought through uh, the whole thing and then uh, you have a clear direction. Okay? That is why you are asked to submit a plan, some direction of work, but as you proceed further you find that the direction is wrong and you can always change the course. Another thing sir, the use of statistics that is test of significance. In some of the areas it is difficult to apply the test of significance. In such a case, the some uh, maybe coordinators or something like that, they insist that there should be some significance testing using statistics. So, in such case, uh, there will be some uh, misunderstandings and other things happening. So, what do you suggest regarding this? Yeah, can you uh, give a specific example of a uh, significance uh, test? Right, uh, statistical significance test that you are uh, talking about, and how there can be a misunderstanding. Uh, without an example, I am not able to answer. For example, uh, for example, uh, in case of chemical processing, there may be some effect of shade variation or effects of uh, effect of some chemicals on shade variation. In case of textiles, I am giving the example, and in suppose red is there, but red will be having different shades. And there it is very difficult to apply this uh, statistics as a significance or not. 
the particular uh, effect is significant or not. Some way of uh, test, uh, when many effects are uh, operation are, are operational at any given time, definitely you have to uh, uh, have some quantitative measure to decide which effects are dominant that has to be there. I think some form of test which uh, gives you quantitative data about the various effects and then allows you to judge which effect is significant and which is not that is required. I, I uh, think there cannot be any misunderstanding on this issue right. Now what kind of a test you use to see whether an effect is significant is, is a different matter I, because that is not an area in which I have done work I, I can uh, I do not think I can guide you on that. But definitely some test which is quantitative which gives quantitative results and therefore which uh, says that you know this effect, this effect, this effect is important and these effects are not important. Some uh, definite test has to be there. Okay, I, I am not able to answer anything further. Another, another example is, uh, another, another example I want to say. For example, the comfort peeling of a fabric, it is, a, it is not objective one. So there are of course some grading systems used for that. But when we use grading system, a particular format is there. And we use that this particular fabric is compatible or not like that. But there it is not possible to use this statistics or significance test, etc. See, you, see it, it, uh, uh, that is not um, uh, the, your, uh, your question uh, has two aspects. One that is very specific to the area of your research. Second is of general significance. Um, what is happening is uh, the way you are framing your question, uh, it appears uh, very specific to your area and unfortunately that area is, uh, that area is not something that uh, I have worked on, okay. So the way the, your question is framed, I am not able to answer because uh, that is not an area in which I have worked on. So unless you frame it in a more general way, right. Uh, I do not think I can answer your question. I, some other expert in your area only will be able to answer it. Okay, sir. There may be subjective analysis and objective analysis. So, my question is related with the subjective analysis, where there will be some experts of that field, they will be having some analysis, subjective analysis. We have some systems. Then a cow butter system, fast system, it is related with textiles, may, be, may not be uh, clear to you. But there are some subjective analysis and grading systems. In such case, I am asking, will, uh, should we insist for the statistical significance test? Over to you. I have to think about your question, frankly. I am not able to uh, give an answer, okay. Uh, Sorry, I will think over it and if I have an answer, I will give you tomorrow. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks again, once again. Uh, SVP Engineering College? Yeah. Uh, I, actually, if you just uh, go with the research in abroad, uh, then we are uh, one step uh, far behind uh, uh, them in the, re in, the, in the case of research when compared with abroad universities and all. So just in this uh, lecture, you told uh, that uh, this will be, you know, the productive thinking will be there if you are, uh, if your guide is, uh, so, uh, uh, is, a, is a kind of productive thinking person. So here I would like to ask you one question that here, uh, I mean, uh, we are in Vishakhapatnam, that is uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, which is there in Andhra Pradesh. Suppose if you want to have some kind of uh, help in research, so the people like you, IIT, IIT professors, can you help us? See, a lot of money you are spending for these programs. But you know, uh, you are just motivating us for uh, uh, giving the, uh, for doing the research. Suppose if I joined uh, for the research in, a, in any university, if my work is not that good, so if I want a, some kind of help, then uh, how far uh, you people will help us? Uh, a good question. Let me first uh, re, uh, restate your questions for the benefit of others who are uh, still there. So what you are saying is, um, in, uh, first I am telling it in your own words, okay, then I will modify it. So what uh, you said is, uh, according to you, as you understood, I said that if uh, the guide is productive, then the student also will be, uh, will uh, develop productive thinking. And um, 
So, um, if you are not able to, uh, so IIT people in IIT are productive thinkers. If students are not able to join productive thinkers in IIT and instead they join with others who are not so productive, then they will not be as productive. But if they want to be productive, how far they can be helped by people from IIT? Uh, that is your question. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, first, I uh, I want to slightly uh, no, correct your first statement. I did not say that if your guide is uh, productive thing, uh, thinking, then you will also be productive thinking. Though it is true to some extent, I said that if your guide um, or rather I said that if you are among people who are well motivated for research, then some of that motivation will rub off on you. So, I said one way of developing good motivation, strong motivation for research is to have company of people who are strongly motivated, right. That is one of the ways of developing motivation as I said and one of the persons who you are with is the guide. So, it applies if a guide is strongly motivated, then you will be motivated. So, I said about motivation not exactly about productive thinking, but it is true that uh, your guide is productive uh, thinking then you will also uh, learn that is that is true, but uh, it can happen that you can be more productive than your guide. It happens uh, many times, right. So, for example, people who have uh, won Nobel prizes, it is not necessary that their guides uh, won prizes, right. So, uh, that, that can always happen. So, I was talking about motivation. Now, as far as the second uh, thing is concerned, how far can people in IIT help? Uh, you see, uh, uh, within practical limitations, uh, people do try to help. But you must understand that uh, research uh, suggestions for uh, 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 research uh, can be given only by people who have thought sufficiently about the problem you are working on. So, suppose you come to me, assuming that you are in my area. Okay? Uh, and ask me for some guidance on something you are working on, uh, it is not possible, it may not be possible to just uh, spend 5 minutes on what you are saying and then give you some uh, ideas, right. Uh, maybe you should do like this and sometimes it may be possible, many times it may not be possible because unless you think deeply about it, you cannot give any suggestions. So, if you are asking questions, so I, it happens, I get emails uh, by students from elsewhere who ask send me questions and ask me doubt. Now, if those doubts are such that I can answer them easily, I tell, I tell give them my phone number and say you call me at this time and I will tell you instead of writing an email because that takes a longer time. Okay? So, if this sort of things are there, you may get some help from people in IIT. But if you are asking for some help in research where uh, the people uh, here have to think over, then you know their time is limited. They already have lot of students to guide. So, uh, you have to understand that limitation. So, uh, it depends on the kind of, uh, so for example, now we are sparing our time. Let us say I am sparing 3 days, right. So, I am not uh, guiding my students uh, during this time. I am sharing something that uh, I can with you and then you are asking me questions. So, this sort of a thing we can do, but uh, if you are ask me a very specific question in your area and that requires more thinking, that uh, you know it may not be possible because you have to understand that. Uh, uh, you know, people have limitation on their time and resources. Okay, so okay, fine, sir. Uh, but uh, you know, this kind of activity should be there so that uh, throughout the country, I mean, uh, everybody is uh, looking for the research. So if this kind of activity is there, then everybody will be into the research and they will be having PhDs in their hand like that. We can uh, uh, be equal to uh, the abroad university, something yes. like. Uh, it's my suggestion. Yeah. And if possible, just uh, it is possible to. Put to all the professors uh, who can help the people in their respective subjects, so that we can uh, go to those, uh, go to that site, and uh, we can go uh, raise a question to the professor who is uh, 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 who is expertise in that particular uh, area. So uh, I request you, sir, you please uh, just uh, uh, you arrange the, uh, the, uh, the, the what I said, uh, the things, if possible. So let me restate for the benefit of others. Uh, what you are saying is, um, if um, there is some uh, mechanism in which uh, IIT professors can help uh, researchers from other institutions who are not necessarily doing PhD with them, then it will improve the state of research in, in, in the country because you want to catch up with what other people are doing. 
So uh, yes, I, I can really see the problem, uh, I can see your suggestion and uh, I, what I would say is that if uh, the other people like you who are very well motivated but who seek help like that um, should spend a sufficient amount of time in framing your specific question in a way in which maybe the uh, people in IIT can give a, a response in a short time, right? So, uh, if people do some homework on their part and then uh, understand the constraints within which IIT professors or any other uh, teach, uh, person whose help you are seeking, right? Constraint within their work and they have a time constraint. So, within the time constraint, how that person will be able to help, right? So, you can give a thought and I think if you come up with uh, something, um, I am sure there will be many people uh, willing to help, okay. So, I will take your suggestion and uh, you can also remember what I said. Okay, thank you so much sir. My, my name is Shankar, it is pleasure talking to you sir and uh, I am handing the mic to my colleague. Yeah. Thank you sir. Sir, uh, one more actually uh, important issue I would like to discuss with you. Uh, unfortunately, what happened actually in the PhD admissions, there is actually we will choose one guide and a co-guide. There is a very big problem actually I have seen in many students actually suffering and uh, also I am the one of the candidate uh, uh, in what are that in suffering, uh, what are the, I suffered a lot. The thing is whatever guide is actually interested in the particular area, when I am discussing the same thing with co-guide, co-guide is not happy. So, if a co-guide is whatever discussing the same thing when I am sharing with the main guide, the guide is not happy. Yeah. And because of these two things, naturally the researcher is not happy. So, it is not only choosing that particular research topic and the coordination between the guide, co-guide and the research scholar, it is actually a very big problem. Yes. And nowadays what I have seen in uh, what are that uh, different universities as well as research centers. So, now what I am requesting you, whoever actually experts in particular areas, if you can list all the people, not only from the IITs, IITs, IASCRs, IAS, TFR, whatever great institutions there, if you can list off these all the people, so who are expert in some, uh, their respected fields, so that the student can choose, the research scholar can choose and the research scholar can interact with these people and can produce the quality research work. And another thing also I will tell you, I am the editor of one international peer-reviewed journal and also a total member, board member of different journals. And I used to get a very non-quality research papers. That number of, quantity of the pages are very more, but the quality is not there. And all are cut and paste. And unfortunate thing, I am not able to, what that, give a wrong what, report to these people who already produced the research paper. Because why? So the guides and co-guides are very, uh, what that, uh, very good, uh, they are from very reputed institutions. When they are producing these kind of work, then it is an another problem. So one thing is that the good professors are not there in the universities. Another thing is the coordination is not there in between guide and co-guide and research scholar. And the third thing is even though the paper has come from a great institution, but still it is not good up to the mark. So these are the things that are happening I have seen. So these are the things also at least if you can address on tomorrow session, yes. it is better. It is definitely it is uh, what that very important for every research scholar so that we can produce better research work, no doubt. Thank you, sir. Definitely, you please think about this, and I think definitely it will helpable for every research scholar. Uh, uh, can I request that uh, you put your these three points on the model this thing so that uh, you know I will make note of them and uh, discuss these points in tomorrow's lecture. Okay. So uh, um, I, I will just summarize what you said. Uh, what happened? Summarize what you said. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you you are talking about the relation between guide, co-guide, and the student. Uh, that is one issue. Uh, uh, the next issue is uh, uh, people doing cut and paste business in uh, sending, uh, in writing papers. That is the second issue you spoke about. Plagiarism, which is what uh, Professor yeah, yeah. Kathme mentioned. And uh, this is, yes sir, yes sir. And uh, the, 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 the third thing uh, is that it is happening even in reputed places. Papers from reputed place, that is what you are saying. So, another thing, sir, actually, you know, yeah, yeah. say, uh, hello. So, there is an another uh, issue also. Some universities respecting that the thesis should be some 200 pages or 150 pages or something like that. So, what actually research scholar is doing, 
So to prepare the ordinary number of pages, he is copying from different word that uh, test books and all. They are doing this uh, cut and paste business. That is also there. Yes. yes. See, instead of uh, showing that number of papers, what kind of a quality there? That is very important. Not the quantity of the papers. Yes. This, so that is also we have to address on tomorrow's session, sir, if possible. And uh, today night I will upload about some mathematics, uh, uh, mathematical sciences uh, about uh, 10 minutes uh, 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 presentation. Uh, please uh, you look out about that presentation, sir. Give me an opportunity to share my ideas with others. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we are closing for the day and we will uh, meet tomorrow again.